Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I want to talk about charging LiPos. Uh, you've all seen this, I've reviewed one of these, it's the Tenergy AccuCell 6 4 button charger. I've got a video which I'll link in the description, shows you how to use one of these to charge one of these or any lithium polymer battery or other battery, whatever you may have lying around, LIFE, uh, NIMH, NICAD, lead acid. These chargers will do just about all of it. But there's one problem with these chargers and that is how do you power them? They come with a set of alligator clips here, or crocodile clips, whichever you prefer. And uh, you clip these onto a source of 12 volts and away you go. But where's your 12 volts going to come from? A lot of people have uh, used car batteries and you can get some cheapy power supplies. I've even shown you how to turn a old computer power supply into a source of 12 volts to drive one of your four button chargers. But there is a better way. And that better way involves uh, using a purpose built power supply. And this is just uh, one of the many switch mode power supplies you could use to power your four button chargers. I bought this from China. I think highmodel.com sold me this. Um, it runs on 110 or 230 volts. It has little terminals here for connecting up your, uh, your AC input over here and your 12 volt output. It's actually 13.8 volts, I think it is. What does it say? Uh, DC output. Well, it says plus 15, but it, honestly, it really isn't. And there's a little pot down here you can adjust the voltage just to get it wherever you want it. So, yeah, that's great. These chunk out about 35, or no, sorry, 25 amps or something, 350 watts roughly. And this one's done a really good job for about, I don't know, two or three years, just sitting around the corner, quietly purring away, powering all my charges. But the other day I went and turned it on, nothing dead, which is why it rattles now. Because what I've done is pulled it apart and it's, got, it's blown a couple of the switching transistors that are uh, essential to the operation of the power supply. So I've ordered some new transistors. They haven't arrived yet. And I figured, well, I ordered them off eBay, so they're probably going to take two or three weeks to this part of the world. And I also wanted to have a spare power supply because, as I found out on the weekend, if you lose your power supply, it's really inconvenient because then you're back to using, I had to use my bench supply, which is only five amps. And when you've got five or six chargers connected up to your big power supply, it can draw a lot of current. So this 25 amps is really, really useful. Five times the capacity of my bench supply. Really great. So I went ahead and I bought a new one of these from Hobby King, but not like this. It looks like this. Here it is, the Hobby King 350 watt power supply. And it's an attractive plastic case. Um, has some terminals on the end to connect up your chargers. And if you've got banana leads on your, or banana plugs on your chargers, you can just plug them straight in there. But I use a bus arrangement, I'll show you later, it's really bodge. But it works well enough. It's got a fan and it's got some tape across here that warns you that dire things will happen if you do not read the warning, you, warning instructions before you use it. So, hey, let's, let's read that after the smoke comes out. Let's take it off because underneath the tape is a not actually, well, these are a standard, I suppose, these power connectors, but they're not my favourite ones. I like the, um, the ones that have got a sort of a, a, a rectangular with the chamfered edges type connector. But I managed to find a power lead that'll go in there because it doesn't come with any kind of power connector, which is probably sensible enough because here in New Zealand and Australia, we have one type of plug and in Europe, they have another one. In America, they have another one. But speaking of that, it's quite important to remember that this comes in two flavours. There is a 230 volt one and a 110 volt one. This obviously stuck to my hand. If you read the little description there, it is the 240, 220 to 240 volt version. That's, I mean, I can't see why they didn't just do it like this and have a switch. This one will work on either. You just throw that little switch on the side, but hey, this is pretty damn cheap. I can't remember the price, but you'll find it on the Hobby King website. It's pretty damn cheap and it has some lights, blinky lights. Well, just lights. Tells you when it's on, when it's over current and when it's over temperature because it has um, over current protection and over temperature protection in theory. I, mean, I don't know. If I slapped the short circuit on here, would it blow up? I have a feeling it would, but I'm not going to try it and find out. So, first of all, I'm going to turn it on, plug it in, make sure it works, and then I think, we'll pull it apart and see what's inside. Okay, I've plugged it into the mains power, and it's got a little switch on the end, so we'll throw the switch. Ooh, that made the lights dim. <laughs> Honestly, it made the lights flicker. Um, but it says it's on. Little green LEDs going there. Hmm. Um, obviously, there was quite a large inrush of current when I turned that on, but it hasn't smoked. Let's check and see what voltage is coming out of it. I shall just, excuse me if there's any noise on my wireless mic while I reach around. Should have got this out before. Get up my multimeter. Ugh. Bad preparation. Oh, never mind. Um, let's connect up the multimeter and see how many volts this little baby is putting out. We'll move it to the side so you can see the meter. Meter on volts. And here we go. It's just, hopefully my wireless mic isn't making too much noise because it's a bit bodge. 13.77 volts. That's near enough for me. 
13.6 supposed to be, or 13.8 or something, I don't know, what does it say, 13.8. So yeah, that's excellent, the output voltage seems really good. Now, in the instructions that come with it, it tells you all about the ripple, 100 millivolts of ripple. In fact, I'll show you the instructions, so you know that it's got some, and they're printed. Yes, brilliant, they're printed, you don't just get a little link to our web page. Here we go, oops, opening them up. Notice the warning and the certifications and all that sort of stuff, there you go. It says that the, the AC frequency is blah blah, 50, 60 hertz, output voltage 13.8 volts, plus or minus 0.5 volts, so it's well within specification. It'll do 25 amps plus or minus 2 amps, which means eh, you're probably going to get 23 amps out of it. Um, and it's got current overload protection at 27 amps, which is really nice to know. It's got fuse, and you know, all the other information you might want to know there. Ah, lovely, brilliant, excellent. So, well it seems to work, so let's turn it off and take it apart. Now just a word of warning, before you take anything like this, any mains related equipment apart, make sure first of all that the power has been removed, but also in the case of these switch mode power supplies, they have some really big capacitors that can hold an awfully fatal, potentially fatal charge in them, so have to be really, really careful. I don't suggest you do this at home, because I'm going to do it for you, it saves you all that time, and potentially a trip to the hospital. So here we go, it seems to have some screws on the ends, We'll take those out, see if we can slide the little thing apart. So here it is in all its glory. There's actually not a lot to these things, to be totally honest. What have we got here? Let's have a look. Our mains power comes in through this little connector here. There's a bridge rectifier that turns the AC from your mains into DC, charges up these capacitors, and then somewhere here we've got some switching transistors here, which are sometimes FET, sometimes transistors. These basically chop up the DC to make a signal which goes into this transformer. On the other side of the transformer, we've got a, another rectifier, and some regulators, and that spits out the DC out here. I mean, it's pretty bloody basic. It's not a lot different to your little uh, little UBEX that you find, or your switching BEX, except that obviously it doesn't have an, your switching BEX don't have an AC input. So let's have a look. Um, plenty of generous heat sinking here, which is really good. The fan is going to be blowing right across that heat sinking. That is excellent. The capacitors are. No name. I mean, this is the most, if, if these things are going to fail, generally what will fail is these capacitors because they have to carry quite a bit of uh, uh, voltage on them. And also th there can be quite a bit of load because you're turning AC into DC. So there's a lot of ripple as it's called on here. So these have got current flowing in and out of them quite a bit. And if you use budget cheap capacitors, they dry out, they lose their capacity and then all sorts of bad things happen. These are just, you know, no name brand. So, well, you know, um, you'd expect to see something like um, Rubicon or or knock on and knock on in a, a better brand, but hey, this is a really budget, really cheap power supply, so oh, I'm not concerned about that. That's fine. Um, we've got what have we got? Um, there's not a lot of way in the way of, in the, in the way of mains protection here, so mm, yeah, I'd like to have seen some more, uh, perhaps some um, <clears throat> varistors, which are things that effectively prevent voltage spikes from damaging any of this stuff, but ah, there's nothing there, never mind. Um, what have we got over here? It's the current shunt for the protection. No, yeah, it's okay. I mean, you know, not much to complain about. It all seems to be pretty good. And let's have a look at these. Oh, yeah, we've got sill pads over those, so they're not going to cause any problems. They are well mounted. Yep, yeah, I guess nothing really to complain about. I'd say, based on the build, it's not bad for the price. Now I thought, hey, while we're pulling stuff apart, why not? pull this thing apart. Let's have a look at the difference between this, which is like a generic budget switch mode power supply, cheap as beans out of China. I think it's about 20 something bucks. So it is definitely cheaper than the Hobby King one, uh, but it doesn't come in an attractive plastic case. It's got a metal case and you don't have the safety of a, a nice um, safety standard mains connector. It's just got these screw terminals here, which will enable you, you to kill yourself much more effectively and more easily if you're going to use this. But let's pull this apart. I'll show you what I found when I pulled it apart before. So here we go, this is what's inside this. It's a bit more industrial strength, I've got to say. Uh, you can tell that because down here, we've got some capacitors, we've got a common mode choke, we've got some MOVs, and these are things designed to stop nasty voltage spikes coming down and ruining our day further up the circuitry here. So this has got a much better input voltage protection than the Hobby King unit. We've got our bridge rectifier, then we've got some capacitors, and these are Nippon Chemicon. At least it says they are. They might be counterfeits, you never know, but Nippon Chemicon, very good brand capacitors, so these will last a long time. Then over here, there were some switching transistors, but these are the bits that broke because when they built this thing, they didn't tighten up the screw to pull them hard against the back of the case, which acts as a heatsink. So after two and a half years, they got hot and died, so I've ordered new ones, as I said. Now, what happens then is that these transistors chop up the power, feed it into this transformer, which converts it from the you know hundreds of volts down to the 13.8 volts that we need to 
then run our little regulators in here and deliver the output, the power output to our chargers. Um, we've got regulators down here or diodes. I'm like, well, I haven't had a close look yet, but I would expect, nah, I'll look later. Um, and there's a little IC in here, little integrated circuit. That basically controls because the way that they regulate the voltage, most of the regulation is done by I did a video one time before showing how, how RSSI can be converted, uh, a pulse width modulation. By making a string of pulses and changing the width of the pulses, you can vary the voltage. And that's what happens with these switch mode power supplies. The transistors that switch off and on switch on for a different length of time to create more power going through the transformer, which gives you more power coming on the output, depending on how much load you've got. I'll link to that video as well, so you get kind of get the idea. But there you go. And this is in a sturdy aluminium frame, or aluminium if you live in America. Um, it's you know it's quite well made actually not too bad at all so it is um, if you were going to set up a bench and do it properly this would probably be a better option than the Hobby King one and also this one's gone for two years you can tell by all the spider poo on it that it's just sat in the corner never been cared for and I should have actually pulled it apart and checked before I ran it up but quality control uh, the design is better quality control crap so you know this isn't too bad for the money it's the same power as the Hobby King one, it's a lot bigger, so you can see that obviously it's going to be more industrial strength and as I say, all that filtering, beauty. So when I get this fixed, or when I get the parts, I'll show you how I fix this, and then we might do a head-to-head -head between the cheap Hobby King and the even cheaper industrial supply. And uh, that's about it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you got, well, that way, which way's up? I don't know, I've got the camera around the other angle. Um, yeah, give it a thumbs up, and if you've got any questions, comments, put them in the bit below the description, I'll do my best to answer them. And maybe, if you like, I'll do a um, whiteboard presentation on how these switch mode power supplies work. But uh, who knows? Perhaps no one will care. Okay, time for me to get back to the bench. Bye for now.